there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, onto your phones or whichever medium you're watching me at. Welcome to my channel. You're welcome to like, subscribe and share and return subscribers. Thank you for your input, for your comments and for Lawrence Palmer and for Robert Reed and for other people who've been motivating me and encouraging me. Thank you very much. And, you know, thank you for those of you who've been giving me material. And yes, I just want to big you all up. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about how the um, Department of Education could be using your children to entrap you if you're not legally into the country. Well, how can they do this? Well, you might think that if you come to this country, whether it's on a tourist visa, whether you overstay, that your children are allowed to attend a UK state funded school. That is not the case if it's not written in their visa. They must have it written in their visa to attend a state funded school in the UK. That would mean that you would have right of abode to live in the UK. Now, supposing you're living in, supposing you decided that you're living here, you've got kids, you haven't got no legal status, but you, your children um, are born in the UK and they're not registered and you have decided to send them to school. Or maybe that's a bit far-fetched. Supposing you've come over um, from wherever and you've brought your children over with you and um, you've just decided to send them to school. Some people think, like in America, um, you can send your children to school. There's no restrictions. Between a certain age, there's no restrictions. But in UK, you need to have um, authority. There needs to be something written in the child's visa um, to say that they can attend a state school or come to the UK for education. Now, a lot of parents may not know that. So what's happened is, um, since the hostile environment policy in 2016, they started off asking children for passports. And they was asking them for which, which country they were born and all sorts. And then it was deemed to be um, not government um, approved. They couldn't do it. Um, so, and it was bordering on discrimination because they was only asking non-black people. Oh, they was only asking non-whites for passports or whether or not they, what nationality they were, which country they came from. So it was deemed um, discriminatory. So they stopped it. So what they decided to do instead, under the guise of a census was to bring out um, a new census form that instead of having black, white, Asian, black, Caribbean, it would have nationality and the country where you were born. Now, what they're claiming is that it's got nothing to do with the Home Office. It's got nothing to do with the, um, the Department of Education's um, pupil database. They just want this information, notwithstanding that the national or the Office of National T Statistics already has this information, they claim that they require this information to improve the integration of these immigrant children. These immigrant children that are um, using up all the budgets in the school, using up all the spaces, taking up all the space, they claim that that is why they need this information. Now, they're... The, it's a bit difficult because parents are obliged to complete the census form. They must keep their they must complete their name, their address, the area that the school is in. They're not obliged to complete their nationality and the country they were born of the children. Uh, they're not even obliged to do their own nationality. But what that does is it waves a red flag. Because what they'll believe if you do not complete it, they'll believe you have something to hide. 
And it was just like, you know, in some legal um, situations where they say, oh, if you don't, um, if you don't speak, you, you know, you are allowed not to speak unless, you know, you've, unless it doesn't incriminate you or something. But as far as they're concerned, if you don't speak, it means you've got something to hide and they'll confer from your non-compliance that you're complicit in some kind of crime or that you're guilty, basically. So it will wave a, it will wave a red flag if that part of it is not completed. But you do not, you do not have to. You're not obliged to complete it. So what's happening now? Well, I believe, this is just my opinion, that children have now become, um, have now become the immigrant spyglass. In other words, children can actually entrap their parents. Because remember, children can be linked to their parents. Now, if they know what nationality the children are, and if they know what country the parents are come from, that's an easy way to think, okay, from the child's records, you have the parents' records, and from the parents' records, you have their address, and you can check out all the information about whether or not they're legally in the country or not. So, I believe that children are being used now as the medium to get parents who are illegal. It's a very clever way to do it because that is the only kind of solid way. Because, okay, they stopped doing the passports, but the passports weren't foolproof anyway because a lot of children came over on their parents' passports if they were under a certain age. So they would not necessarily have had all the passports, but every child has a parent. And they are able to gauge the parent's nationality or check into it a little bit more to find out whether or not that parent is legal. So you could be in a situation where your child should not be attending a state school and that leads them to finding you and you should not be in the country. This is just a hypothetical situation to show how it could work hypothetically. At the moment, like I said, they're saying they're not working with the Home Office and they're not working with the Department of Education. I find it hard um, not to believe that it doesn't go on the pupil database when it's got to do with the children. And the pupil database deals with all children from the age of two to, to 21. Whereas this census is covering children from five to 19. I don't even why nine, I don't even know why 19, because you're no longer a child once you're 18. But anyway, it goes up to 19. So anybody within that age group, they are asking for nationality and the place where that child is born. Um, what else have I got here? In most cases, children arriving from overseas have the right to attend schools in England. Like I said, in America, they do. England is a bit different. Schools admissions authority must not refuse to admit a child on the basis of their nationality or immigration status, nor remove them from the role on this basis. Now, a lot of parents might jump on that and think, oh, yeah. So if they're not allowed to remove them and they're not allowed to refuse them based on their status, we're going to put them into the school anyway. But it will come back to bite you on the bum because if they are in the school, in quotes, illegally, that you're, they're going to track you. And that is why they're going to, I mean, I know they're saying that it's, it's got nothing to do with the Home Office, but if they want to come down hard, that is the way they can find about your background. Remember, a lot of the information the Home Office gets is from schools, it's from the health service, if you go to the A&E, you can get information about anybody based on that. Unless you live in a if, unless you live in a secluded place and you don't go and use any government um, building or you don't use any service, they will track you down. So now 
they're going to, well now, I'm sure they've already started using the children. It went quite quiet. I mean, it was quite a big thing in 2016. And, you know, there's ripples of it in 2017. I think the census came out in, I think it comes out three times a year in October and May and another month. October, probably August and May. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, is that as long as you've got children going to school, if you're not documented, you could be in trouble sooner or later. I'm just giving you the heads up. Um, it is the responsibility of the parents to check that their child, their children or child, have a right under their visa entry conditions to study at a state school, a state funded school. So let's hope you've done that. And does the parent have right of abode? Because that is one of the criteria when their ch children can attend a state-funded school. If the parents have right of abode, of course their children can attend. If they don't, until October 2020, all EEA and Swiss nationals will continue to have a right under UK immigration law to enter the country to access a school. After that, we've got the settlement scheme and all other kind of um, things going on. But at least, you know, until December 2020, you can still access schools and your children can still access schools. God knows what's going to happen after that. Um, so at the moment, as a part of the school census, schools are required by the Department of Education to collect the nationality and country of birth of children aged 5 to 19. They say it's not shared with the Home Office, but who knows? The information is already collected by the National Office of Statistics, so why would they need it again? I'm just, I'm just asking the question. They also claim it does not enter the National Pupil Database, which is controlled by the Department of Education that collects data on individuals aged 2 to 21. So I find that hard to believe because why wouldn't you collect that kind of information? What is wrong if you collect that information? So the fact that they're stating that they don't collect it, collect it um, kind of rings alarm bells. To me it does. Um, parents have the right to say no, but just like in legal cases, as I said before, um, they'll, they'll draw their own conclusion for non-compliance. It'll wave red flags if you say, I'm not going to put down the nationality or the country that you're from. Um, school children under the immigration spyglass. That's what I call it. Because I really believe that school children could be used as a platform to get a lot of immigrants out on the surface. I mean, it's not hard. It's not hard. All they've got to do is their little calculations. Once they get the nationality and they get the country their child is born, they've already got date of birth. They can work it all out. Whether or not the, and then all they've got to do is see whether the child is registered in the country. Then they can see whether or not the child is um, eligible to be going into that school, attending that school. If that child is not eligible to attend that school, then they can jump on the parents. Then they have license to investigate the parents. Everything is linked. The government wants to know how many children from immigrant families are being taught in UK schools. Hmm, I wonder why. Probably because the budget, they said, you know, the budget isn't enough. We've got all these immigrants in these schools we, and they all belong to um, 
illegal immigrant parents and we need to get them out because they shouldn't be here the parents shouldn't be here these kids shouldn't be here they're in there they don't even speak english they don't even speak the language they're using up all the resources they're taking up all the places we can't even get our kids in these local schools do you notice they're all full up every time you go and try and get a space they're all full up they're all full up of these immigrant kids they need to get out so this is the way they're going to try and find a way to get them out and they'll be quite justified in doing so if they're not legally entitled to be in the school they're not legally entitled to be in the country and the parents are not legally entitled to be in the country or and they've taken on that responsibility that's another thing if the parents are sending them to school and they're not supposed to they can be done for this fraud and misconduct and all, all kinds of things any excuse to boot you out i mean some people might not even know because i really thought any child had a right to go for education <coughs> sorry had a right to education it didn't say when they say every child has a right to education and has a right to you know being treated well has a right not to be neglected and all these you know the rights of the child i thought that every child had a right to be educated i didn't realize that every child had a right to be educated as long as it was written in the visa i didn't realize that i know now though So anyway, this all came out with the hostile environment policy in 2016. That's when all of this came about. Somebody thought, oh, how are we going to get rid of some more immigrants? Now, let me say, we've got the kids in there, a lot of kids, immigrant kids in the schools. Hmm, I wonder if their parents are illegal. Let's, let's try and find a way how we can get them. How can we get these immigrant kids and how can we link them to their parents? Hmm. All we've got to do is find out where they're born, find out when they came into the country. We can track down their parents. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Yeah, we'll get them out by hook or by crook. So, even though it's gone quiet and they're not asking for passports, they definitely are not sleeping. They are not sleeping. So what else have we got here? Um, yeah, to asking for passport, asking to, asking to see the children's passport was found to be against government guidance. And some schools were only asking for the nationality and country of birth of non-white students, which was found to be discriminatory. But it's just like with um, the rentals, when you go to um, rent a place, they're not gonna ask a white person who speaks English for his nationality, are they? Or to see his passport. So it, ha it, it goes without saying, it's only for people of color. That these, that these rules apply. Parents are obliged to fill in the census form, but have the right to refuse giving nationality or country of birth of your children. Parents also have the right to withdraw data that has already been submitted. No parent or child should be asked to produce passport or identity documents, as if it makes a difference. It doesn't make a difference whether you're asked to produce identity documents or passport or not. They can find out everything they want about you just by your name and your date of birth. You've got, you, you, you're living somewhere, aren't you? So from you've got your date of birth, they've got your address. That's all they need. They don't need your bloody passport. It's probably not even in date. So they don't care about that an identity document. So when they're saying, oh, we don't, um, we don't, we're not going to ask for the passports or identity documents. It doesn't make a difference. As long as they've got your nationality 
and they got your um, the date you came into the country or the country you were born, they can put two and two together. They might make three, but most of the time they'll make four. So schools should not ask children directly for their nationality or country of birth, but should ask parents instead. I'm sure if you've got a 15 year old child, they, they, they could ask, couldn't they? Unless the child knows that they have to ask the parents. I mean, a lot of these children won't even know that they're not supposed to answer these questions. It's an authority, isn't it? It's an authority figure. A teacher asks you a question. What's your nationality? You're going to immediately respond, aren't you? What country were you born? You're going to immediately respond. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, you've got to ask my mum when you've got the answer. Kids don't react like that. So you've already got the bloody answer. They shouldn't be asking the kid in the first place, but who knows if they do or not. Schools must tell parents about their right to refuse to give or withdraw their children's nationality data. Schools must also tell parents who their children's data might be shared with. And before the before the census was only before the census was only interested, like I said, in whether you're not used black or white or Asian. Now it doesn't. They want the whole gamut. And children um, are also being assessed on their English levels. Apparently, it's meant to be um, to help them integrate and to get special training. But it wouldn't be surprised if they come in with some kind of tier one or tier four. Um, criteria on a visa for children that they have to speak up, speak to a certain le language level in order to be accepted into the schools, the state funded schools. It would not surprise me. So um, they're very, very busy. They're very, very busy stirring the pot and coming up with different kinds of stews. And um, yeah, anyway, if you have any concerns, there's a company, well, you've got Migrant Rights. I'm going to put the link um, below. They do a little leaflet, which is very, very good. Um, but they also have Against Borders for Children, ABC. Um, it's www.schoolsabc.net. So schools ABC is one word. www.schoolsabc.net. Dot net. Um, you can check that website. Um, there's a company called Liberty. Um, their telephone number is 0845-123-2307 or landline, well they're both landlines really, 0203-145-0461 and they're open Mondays to Thursday 6.30 till 8.30 p.m. in the evening, or Wednesdays, 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. So they kind of cater, you know, for those people who may be coming in from work or whatever. And yeah, I think I am going to leave it there. Yeah, that's all for now. Bye-bye.